Listen, so I know you guys like to cry when I make fun of your favorite gears, and that's okay. I'm not judging you for loving really corny guitar pedals. Heck, I... <sighs> I'm not judging you for your love of the HX Stomp or the Helix or the even the new Fender thing. They're they're cool. I've been tempted to buy them and I'm not going to. One of the reasons I will say is look, we got Zach Wild out here. Why do you saying why why the fuck do you need a computer that has 56 million goddamn amps and all this shit. Tell Zach Wild he's wrong. I'm just relaying the message. But uh, today, I have something really special for you. Um, I'm going to go through the reasons why I got rid of my Oxbox, why I think overall Universal Audio is just like the hype beast of guitar. <laughs> have an LA610. I have an Apollo 8, but I don't use it anymore. I've actually switched over to the Antelope Audio Orion as my primary interface because it's just superior in every single way possible, but uh, especially sample rate, conversion, clarity to my speakers. Um, there's just so many reasons why uh, uh, Universal Audio is just very mid. They're very mid. You might not like hearing that, but they're just mid, okay? But before I do that, I'm like, I'm gonna throw you guys a bone. I'm gonna tell you the pros of the Oxbox, why I bought it, what I think is actually really good about it, and uh, obviously, I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't see some sort of value in it in the first place. So, I have a little list here. One obvious thing was I was moving from a house into an apartment. And I had a lot of amp heads. And I didn't know what the situation was going to be like. So, the Oxbox was a good option for me then. I sh quickly very quickly realize though that if i'm going to use the ox box just plugging directly into my microphone preamp di especially because i have like preamps like neve 1073s portico 2 channel strips uh the 610 those preamps sound great with a DI and in conjunction with a plug-in, it kind of ended up blowing the aux box out of the water. I think the plugins that are being made nowadays are pretty amazing. I wouldn't necessarily rely on them for a professional recording, but you know, they get the job done for a little demo or even if it's all you got, then that sounds pretty good. So I, I can't knock the plugins, but I will say that was my main purpose in buying the Oxbox. And it's great for that. If you have 50 amps, awesome. It could be useful. And if you are in a space where you can't record them with a the microphone, by all means, it's definitely an option to look at. That's why I bought it. The I think the room simulations are also pretty cool. I would say that's one of the more underrated aspects of the Oxbox is getting the room sounds, but it's a double-edged sword because the room sounds that you get if you're using the aux box as an attenuator all of these things are affecting your amp and how they come out of your speaker so you can't get like a true attenuation and that kind of drives me crazy so if your primary purpose is to use the aux box as an attenuator maybe not the move it's like 1500 bucks there's gotta be a cheaper option even well the red box is not an attenuator, but it's an approximation of a decent DI type thing if you can't 
or don't have a microphone, don't have a budget for a good microphone, but you have a good preamp, those are okay. The one downside though is that you, like you're if you're in an apartment, then you still have to have speakers to load the amp head. So not great, but it's on its way. And uh, the simulations overall and the Oxbox were pretty good, especially if you're like listening to them in headphones. Not bad. But here are the cons. Here's why I sold it. Here's what people aren't going to tell you about the Oxbox, especially somebody selling one on Reverb like I was, which uh, whatever, you bro got a good deal. So I don't even feel bad about it. But um, <laughs> first things first. So I bought it right when it came out and right out of the box, it was buzzing from the uh, quarter inch output. So when I plugged it into my interface, there was a buzz. And so my fix for that was to, well, at first I tried different amps to see if it it was the amps. It wasn't. It was the Oxbox itself. So what I just did was low pass, high pass, whatever frequencies they were. Uh, I probably used ozone to get rid of that. Like I said, I didn't use it for long, although I owned it a lot longer than I used it just because it, it did not take me long to figure out that it wasn't for me, which is fine. I just, I don't like that buzz. And so eventually I came around and I was like, you know what? I got it. I gotta make this thing work. So I bought a Spitif cable and I was like, well, maybe Spitif, the Spitif out sounds a lot better than the quarter inch out, which to my dismay, it actually sounded worse. There was this like harsh digital, like kind of ringing a sound that um, was really hard to describe, but it, it was like just faintly there and it really bothered me. And I didn't want to sit there and uh, RX that out every time I had to record a part. That's ridiculous. You know, I, tr I try to do my best to get things to sound how I want them in the recording stage so that mixing is a lot easier. So if you're using it for recording, maybe not for you. Again, if it's more just like, all right, I'm going to use the attenuator. I can play my amps in the house a little quieter. It could still be an option, maybe not the best option. Really what it came down to for me, this was like the straw that broke the camel's back, was I... <sighs> did a shootout between the DI, the Oxbox, which I already knew I liked the DI better than the Oxbox, and a microphone. And I have different microphones, tube mics, you could see a mic over here, that's Audio-Technica 4050, which is a pretty decent kind of mic. It sounds similar to uh, U87 to me, actually. It's very clean, a lot of high end. It's a okay mic, but probably not my favorite. That's why I throw it on the drums. It can be good for some things. I hate it on acoustic guitar. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out a good acoustic guitar mic. So if you guys got one that you like that you think I should try, drop it in the uh, comments below because I'm looking for a good acoustic guitar mic, maybe like a ribbon or something. I've been thinking about the AEA stuff. But once I shot it out with my microphone, oh my gosh, dude, that is crazy. It's so night and day. The Oxbox, that's what really got to me with the Oxbox was that it claims to compete with, uh, you know, really miking your amp and you can get the same sounds and, oh, look, you can use a four, 14 or a 86 or a 67 or, you know, what whatever, a uh, Royer. And we have all these emulations and 1176s and 610. And it's really not as good as they sell it as, which is disappointing. 
So, I don't know. That's just my opinion. It, hopefully this helped you if you're on the fence about the Oxbox and you're thinking about buying one. And uh, it gave you some clarity on whether or not you should buy it. Like, subscribe, do all that shit.